So let's talk about what an exponential equation is to begin with. So an exponential equation, exponential equation is an equation containing a variable in the exponent, hence exponential equation. So an exponential equation is an equation where the variable is locating the exponent. Everything you've done so far, if you go back, the exponent were numbers. They were, none of them were variables, the exponent. An exponential equation is where the equation, the variable is located where? In the exponent. So here's some examples. Um, 3 to the x equal 5. That's an exponential equation. Because where's the, where, where's the variable? That looks like a 4, but that's an x. 3 to the x. It's in the exponent. So those are exponential equations. Are they a little bit more complicated to solve, though? This one is. Um, here's another one. 2 to the x minus 1 equals 4. That one is actually easier to solve than the first one I wrote. You're going to see why in a little while. 2 to the x minus 1 equals 4 is an easier equation to solve, easier exponential to solve than the other one, even though the other one looks simpler. So those are exponential equations. Now what you're going to do is try and solve these exponential equations. One way, and it's not always the case though, one way to solve an exponential equation, so some exponential equations, some now, some exponential equations can be solved by expressing both sides of the equation as a power of the same base. <laughs> So some exponential equations are easy. Those are easy. Some exponential equations can be solved by expressing both sides of the equation as a power of the same base. For example, we're going to start with an easy one. Listen carefully to this. Here's what it's going to look like. So suppose I want you to solve, and, and that's an easy one. You're not going to have this on a test because it's too easy. Oh. Suppose you want to solve this equation. 2 to the x equals 2 to the fourth power. That's an exponential equation. What do you think x must be so that the left side equals the right side? 4. four. x has to equal 4. That's what you're going to end up doing. You're going to end up getting the bases to be the same. You've got to remember what a base is from your previous courses. On the left side, what's my base? Two. Two. Good. What's my exponent? X. X. On the right side, what's my base? Two. Two. What's the exponent? Four. Four. So you knew right away that if I had this exponential equation, then X must equal what? Four. Four. So when you get the base to be the same, then the exponents have to be equal to each other. Right? Okay. That's the idea. That's what that statement said. So let's look at this one. Suppose we want to solve, so this is our first one. Number two, suppose I want to solve um, 2 to the x minus 1 equals 4 this time. All right, so now I 
as easy as the previous one. So what you got to think about now is this. How can it get the bases to be the same? Not the multiply by two. You think about rewriting the four as some base to a power. Four. Okay, so when, when you're trying to get the base to the same, look at the, the one that, that's on the allowed. That's two, right? The one that you write is four. How can you write four? Two to the second power. Two to the second power. That's what you got to think of. Four is two to the second. Two times two? So two to the x minus one equals two to the second, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to rewrite both sides so it has the same base. Hold so, uh, on. Don't take what x equals away. I didn't, I didn't pass you that. I know, I know you're smart. But hold on. Hold on. So four is two squared, right? So you've got to try to write both sides with the same base. So on the left, my base was two. I knew that four is two what? Squared. Now there'll be situations where you have to do both bases. Here you only have to deal with the right one. You only have to rewrite the right side. The base is the same, so, there, so therefore that means x minus one must equal what? X minus one doesn't equal three. X minus one equals what? Two. two. The exponents have to equal. The exponent on the left must equal the exponent on the right. Now, X equals what? Three. There's your solution. So your solution is X equal three. <laughs> the same reason we did that one. When the base is the same, we said a while ago that the exponents have to be equal, right? Okay? So when the base is the same, what do you know about the exponent? They have to be the same. They have to be equal to each other. What? Probably. Yeah. All right. Now you can always check yourself. Let's go back to the original. I'm saying that my solution is what? Three. What's three minus one? What's two squared? Four. Okay. All right, so that's number two. Number three. Suppose I had this. Suppose I had five to the three x minus one equals 125. Five to the three x minus one equals 125. Now remember, in this part of the lesson, you're going to solve these equations by getting the base to be the same. So five, there's nothing much I can do with five, because five is prime, right? But what about 125? What do you, what do you know about 125? You need your calculator, guys. Yeah. Is five to a power? The third, right? Yeah. Okay. Five squared 25. Now, remember, five squared 25, right? Yeah. Not 125. So here's what you say. You're going to say five to the three x minus one equals 5 cubed. Now, do I have the bases the same? Yes. All right, well, if the bases are the same, then what else must be true? The exponents have to be equal to each other. So the exponent on the left must equal the exponent on the right. You saw that based on the first example. So it should make sense that they have to be equal based on what we did earlier. You all said, I'm hoping you all said, that here that x was equal to 4. The exponent on the left must equal the exponent on the right. What's the exponent on the left? What's the exponent on the right? And then you solve that equation. So I'm going to add one to both sides. And so I get 3x equal 4. So what's x? 4 thirds. There's your solution. I solved I solve that exponential equation. x equal Four thirds. You can always check yourself. Go back to the original, just like you did with everything else we've done. If x is four thirds, what's three times four thirds? Four. What's four minus one? Three. What's five to the third? One twenty-five.
All right. Number four. Eight to the x plus two equal four to the x minus three. So let's 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 do this one first. Let's come back to that one. So let, let me just do this one for right now. Let's let's do five first. Suppose I had eight to the x minus one equal four. Okay. All right. Now think about that one. I've got to get the base to be the same. So then you ask yourself, am I going to make the base fours? No, because 4 to the second power, 4 to the third power, 4 to the fourth power is not going to equal what? 8. You've got to get those two bases to be exactly the same. Right here. But what do you know about 8 and 4? They can both be written as a power of what? 2. Very good. Because 2 squared is what? Four and two cubed is what? Eight. Okay? That's your thinking. All right, now here's how you're going to write the, the left side, though. You got to be careful. Circle the eight, and remember, eight is now going to be written as what? Two cubed. But that is being raised to what power? X minus one. Notice I circled the eight, so that's why you see that parentheses here. Okay, four is what? Two squared. All right. Now here's here's why that parentheses is important. One of the things you learned in the previous course was that a power raised to power is what to those powers? You multiply. You multiply. So this three has to be multiplied by what? x minus 1, so you can distribute this thing here. So it becomes 2 to what power? 3x minus 3. Not 3x minus 1, 3x minus 3. And that's equal to what? 2 squared. So that's where we're at. So notice that now we have a situation where, where both bases have to be rewritten so I can get the base to be the same. We also have to remember that the problem we learned from several semesters ago, we have a power to power you multiply by those powers. So then, if the base is the same, then what must be true about the exponents? So 3x minus 3 has to equal what? 2. Add 3 to both sides. I get 3x must equal what? 5. So therefore, x must equal what? 5 thirds. So x must equal 5 thirds. Right? All right. Now, let's just check this using a calculator. Let's check it using a calculator. All right, check in the calculator. So you go back to the original. Where we see the variable x, what do you substitute? Five thirds. All right, so listen carefully to this. So go back to the original. Watch how I'm inputting this stuff. You're going to say 8 raised to, see that x minus 1 is parentheses, so make sure you use the exponent symbol. So 8 raised to, in parentheses, x, what's x? So 5 divided by 3, subtract 1, close parentheses, press equal, what do you get? 4. Okay, so 5 thirds is the solution. All right? Okay. So that was number five. Now let's go to number four.
So what we just did number five should help you with number four. I have eight and four. There is no way I can get the base to be four, right? Because there's there's no way you can write four to a whole number and it equals eight. But how else do you want to rewrite eight and four using what what base? Two. So eight is two to what power? Third, so put that in parentheses. And that's being raised to what exponent? X plus two. Four can be written as what? Two squared. And that's being raised to what power? X minus three. So that will be your next step. That will be what you would write. Now you get rid of parentheses. We have the power to power multiplied. So this three has to be multiplied by X plus two. So it becomes two to what power? Very good. And over here will be 2 to what power? 2x minus 6. 2x minus 6. All right. So now you're done. The rest is easy. What's the next thing you're going to write? 3x plus 6 minus 2x minus 6. Yep. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. So I get x plus 6 equal negative 6. And then finally do what? So what's x? So there's your solution. Negative 12. You can check it. Let's use the calculator. All right. First of all, let's plug in negative 2 for right now. I'm sorry, not negative 2, negative 12. What's negative 12 plus 2? So I'm asking myself, is 8 to the negative 10th power the same as, and what's negative 12 and a negative 3? Negative 15. So is that the same as 4 to the negative 15th power? All right, so let's put that in a calculator. 8 to the negative 10th power, 8 raised to the negative 10 equal, I get something that looks like this. Right, use your calculator. Which button was it? Well, use your calculator. Don't just look at mine. You have you got to know how to use your calculator. Eight raised to the negative ten, and you get this thing in scientific notation. So it it so this part looks like nine point three one. I'm estimating times ten to negative tenth power. That's scientific notation. Over here, that's 4 to negative 15. 4 raised to the negative 15, you get the same thing. Same thing. Okay? So they're both of them. All right, number 6. Number 6. Suppose we had 2 to the 3x minus 1 equals 16 to the x plus 2. Now that one's straightforward. What base do you think you're going to use? 2. Because 16, you know, is written as 2 to what power? 4. 4. So you're going to use base 2. So 2 to the 3x minus 1 equals, in parentheses, 2 to the 4th, right? And x to the raised to the x plus two. So the first thing you would write. Then let's get rid of the parentheses on the right hand side. So the left side is two to three x minus one. The right side is two to the what power? Four x plus eight. Four x plus eight. Good. Not four x plus four. A plus two. Four x plus eight. Now the base is the same, so what's the next equation that you're going to write? Okay. So let's subtract 4x from both sides. So I get a negative x minus 1 equal 8. Add 1 to both sides. 
I get a negative x equal 9. So that means x equals a what? Negative 9. So there's your solution. So x equals a negative 9. Number 7. Sixteen to the x plus two equals four to the x minus one. Sixteen to the x plus two equals four to the x minus one. What base? Four. four. Okay, because because sixteen is four. Squared. Could someone have said, well, I, can I use base 2? You could have to do both sides. You, you could use base 2. We'll do it both ways. But it's, it's a lot easier if you make the base as big as possible. So let's use 4. So 16 is, is for what? Squared. squared. And that's being raised to our power equal 4 to the x minus 1. So the left side becomes 4 to what power? 2x plus Very good. 4 to the x minus 1. Now what's the next statement that I write? 2x plus 4 equals x minus 1. Yep. Alright, so let's solve this linear equation. So I get x plus 4 equal negative 1. Subtract 4. What's my solution? Negative 5. So, negative 5. So, so, notice that when I solved this exponential equation, I ended up solving a linear equation. And the solution to that linear equation is a solution to the exponential equation. Yes? Yes, these are always going to end up for us. It will be. It's not, it's not always the case, but for us, it will be. Because sometimes they could be quadratic. This could be a quadratic. Uh, this could be x squared up here instead. In that case, it would be quadratic. But for our purposes, it would end up being linear. Let's do this using base 2 instead. So let's do number 7 again. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. But this time, I want us to use base 2 and, and just to see what we have to go through. So if I use base 2, 16, I can write as 2 to my power. To what? To the fourth. And that's being raised to what power? Four, I can write as two to what power? And that's being raised to what power? All right. Now let's rewrite the left side. That's two to what power? And that's two to what power? Minus two. Now what do I do? Yep. And then you, so notice I went from this exponential to a linear equation to solve this linear equation. Okay, thank you. So subtract 2x from both sides. I get 2x plus 8 equal negative 2. Subtract 8. I get 2x equal negative 10. So what's x? Negative 5. And that's what we said it was supposed to equal to. Good? All right. Let's do one more, number eight. We may do two more. But let's do number, yes? Are you talking about the base beam? Yes. Yeah, you always be. You always can write the base as, as uh, a number raised to a power to get them both the same. Will there ever be where it's not going to be raised? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by raise. I'm I'm a little confused. Raised, like the, the we 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 did. I showed you this earlier. I think what you're saying is it always going to be a fairly simple. No, we did. I, I remember we talked about this one. 
I, when, when we talked about this, I said this one's going to be easier to solve than this one, right? So this one, you can't get the base to be the same. That's three and five. What are you going to use? Not, you, you can't. So you have to solve this using logarithms. Oh, that's really I guess we're going to learn how to do that too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the left side, you're going to use logarithms. And the right side, we use the same basis. We're going to save that for another day. Yeah, it won't be today. There are a couple other things we've got to learn before we can actually deal with logarithms. All right, number eight. Suppose I had this. All right, suppose I had uh, 5 to the x plus 1 equal 1. 5 to the x plus minus 1 equal 1. Let's see if you remember something from a previous course. How can I get the base and be saying what base might you want to use? 5. 5, okay. How would you use 5? You keep using the word multiply. Something's going to work right now. <laughs> so, so look at the right side. How can I write the right side as 5 to a power? That's what we could use. 5 to the fifth is not 1. It won't be my whole 1. 5 to the first power is 5. No, and, and, and I knew that none of you know this because it's easy to forget. 5 to the 0 power. Remember, any number raised to 0 power is what? 0. 1. <laughs> oh my God. Any number raised to 0 is 1. Take your calculator out. Take your calculator out. Take your calculator out and stop saying that. I got it. <laughs> On your calculator, what is 3 to the 0 power? 1. one. Look, I just figured out how to use my What's power. 2 to the 0 power? 1. What's 7 to the 0 power? 1. one. Now, when we did this in 97, not 97, 98, 98. When we did this in 98, that's when it first came about in 98. Y'all listen up. We talked about this in 98. This is the way we did it. We said, what if you had 5 to the third divided by 5 to the third? Well, we know that anything divided by itself is what? One. One. But we also learned the property back then that said that when you divide like bases, what do you do with those exponents? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> subtract. You subtract. So this becomes 5 to the 3 minus what? 3. So that's 5 to what power? And remember, we said a while ago that that has to equal what? 1. So 5 to 0 power is 1. That's how we discuss this. So any number except zero raised to the zero power is what? One. one. So, so here, when you rewrite this right side, you're going to say 5 to the x minus 1 equals 5 to what power? Zero. Now that the base is be the same, so what must be true? What must be true? X minus 1 has to equal what? So what's X? 1. X is 1. So there's your solution. X is 1. It kind of makes sense because, look, if I substitute 1, what's 1 minus 1? And we said 5 to 0 is what? 1. Number 9. Number 9. Okay, suppose I had um, five to the two x minus one equals twenty five to the x power. Ooh, let's not do that one. Let's take three x power. What's the 
space do you think you're going to use? Five. Do I change both of them or do I just change one of them? Just one. The 25. 25 is what? Five squared. Five squared. So I get five to the two x minus one equals five squared in parentheses raised to what power? All right. So rewriting this, I get five to the two x minus one equal five to the six x. Once I get the base to be the same, then what else must be true? The exponents must be equal. So two x minus one must equal what? All right. A couple more steps and, and you are done. What's the next step? So I get negative 1 equals a 4x. Divide both sides by 4. What's x? Negative 1 fourth. So there's your solution. Okay? All right. So the, the first part of exponential equations is, is just where you can get the basis to be the same. But we saw a while ago that for all equations that way, for all the exponential equations that way, where the basis can be the same. No. In that case, you have to use the logarithm. We're going to talk about that soon. But before we can talk about logarithms, we've got to talk about some preliminary stuff about the idea of logarithms. All right, before we do that, let's take the next in-class quiz.